So it doesn't look like it was for the. Uh, doesn't look like it was for the movie. Looks like it's for the comic that's coming up. Oh, okay. It's the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that yep. It does look yeah. That looks like some interiors from it. Yeah, because I think that even got pushed back even because that was supposed to come out uh, this year? this month. This month, yeah. yeah, and then yep, now it's pushed down to January. It looks like, which is fine. I mean, happens. But yeah, it's interesting. I just thought that it was a little bit misleading. I was like, oh, cool, we're gonna finally get a Eternals yeah, trailer. Uh, I was, I was gonna say, it was like, because I would have for sure thought I saw something like that too. And I was like, but uh, that that makes sense. Yeah, they're they're getting ready for the that movie. Hopefully they'll come out with it here next well, year. But and, I, we'll and I'm hoping that's a big sign that they are actually getting ready for like why push the comic if you're not gonna have the movie running yeah. with it? At least at some point. But uh I've been wrong before. <laughs> Who the f knows? Um I think it's a good start though. I'm looking forward to new series and kind of new things. Maybe that'll tie into the whole Thor Black Winter uh thanos thing since we saw thanos at the end mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know we don't know we have no clue because we have no clue how long that is going to span out you know what i mean we don't know the scope of that story because it could end in december but we have no idea you know what i mean mm -hmm. so uh i guess then we're talking superheroes so comics what did you catch up with i, I read uh venom at least the the finishing arc for that nice. uh codex stuff uh, still, it ended up pretty cool. It was a little cool little arc. I liked it. Nice. I still got to catch up on Venom. Uh, I have been checking out a lot more of the si like new stories from Marvel as opposed to just the continuing ones I'm reading. Don't get me wrong, I still read Immortal Hulk, and I finished off X of Swords because um, that finished off this week. Yeah, I still uh, I still need to get that issue they didn't, uh, was missing this week, so hopefully they get it in for next week. The but old, I haven't even started it, so... <laughs> the only thing I will say... I mean, I'll say a couple things. I, I'll say I was a bit disappointed. Okay. But not because it was bad, just because it didn't hit where I thought it was going to go, or maybe, or it just didn't give me the sense that I thought it was going to with the, this kind of event. And it might be because he's got more coming. Mm -hmm. We know that he writes in really big arcs. Mm -hmm. But... Just for something like this, and don't get me wrong, it was still done well in certain ways, and was there were interesting reveals, twists, and plot stuff going on, as well as story and character building for the universe. But I just felt a little uh, like something was missing, I guess. I don't know. Having said that, it was still pretty decent, and uh, one of the benefits, I think, of it is, even though it is 22 books or whatever, they're very sequent. Like, it's not, like hard to get them it says x of swords three of 22 or whatever you know what I mean? <laughs> right. and and there isn't as far as i know, I mean a couple things for like preview reading or whatever but there isn't like oh you need to read avengers or this or that it really is just an x-men event mm, okay so so i think that mitigates some of the problems i have with the event stuff but i don't know okay Wait, caught up on that uh all right nice oops. Um, there I caught up with the Marta Hulk stuff. Nice, um, yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, Doc Sasquatch. Good. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's a new it. character that we get to that we get to have. Yeah. Um. Yeah, ending. Uh, I'm kind of curious where it's just gonna end. It's been, like I said, it got it kind of got really good there the last few uh issues again. Uh, towards the middle, it's getting a little. I don't know, kind of boring at some. I think it's just. I don't the, know. I think it's just a tough thing with some of the pacing on longer books like this is that there are inevitable down points. Yeah. Like there's, it can't oh. be high paced and awesome all the time. There got to be points where they're like leading into the awesome. So yeah, it was cool to see a little bit more what the leader's doing and uh, see what, his, how uh, kind of go back and see how he got his plan originally going. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, it was good read. Um, other than that, what else? Is there? Oh yeah. I caught up uh well, department of truth issue number. Yeah. That uh, was, I actually didn't Three. like this last issue as much. Three. Yeah, it was um, all right. I, it was cool, but I I much prefer the uh, where they had started with the more larger than life mythological kind of things, like the mm -hmm. edge of the world or the assassination of Kennedy kind of stuff, 
as a, yeah. and not to say this isn't important or wasn't a cool concept of like you know the the whole driving yourself crazy or whatever. Uh, I, I you know I kind of liked it just because it was kind of uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, I I feel like he's gonna touch a lot of weird just conspiracy thing. <laughs> well, I, yeah, this is just one of those ones that was kind of like. Like wow, that that kind of was happening, and I was I don't know. It's interesting to see the way it kind of plays out and how he kind of plays it in, like how it can be true, kind of in a sense. Yeah, no, <laughs> in his I world. Mean, yeah, I'm, it was the it was an interesting take on it for sure. But I see what you mean. Yeah, you just like yeah, kind of a bigger. I just like uh, I said, it it was something like uh, had he tackled maybe like the nine eleven bombing or something like that in a similar capacity, and okay. not even to say like this one. I think once again, even beyond the scope, is the kind of legend status. So, say he hit, call, he did like Columbine or uh, one of the other very famous, famous mass shootings that are actually existent. I think that was my real disconnect. Is it's there's so many actual shootings out there that even if this one was based on a real one, which probably was honestly, based mm-hmm. on the way he writes that I just didn't have that same uh, connection. Uh, I see what you mean. Okay. Because it was a cool concept for sure. Like I enjoyed the whole, I liked it because it had that very uh, cerebral kind of terror thing where it's like messing with your mind as opposed to like, oh, a monster's out to get me. Uh, yeah, it, it's really interesting. Yeah, that how this book is playing out, though. I really like the. So you read now. You finally read one and two, huh? So yeah, so you, I actually did read two last time, and I just forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've been enjoying it then, huh? So, no, so it's far, a really good. I I will say, uh, the structuring of the the book sometimes messes with me. But, oh, but I think it's. Oh, I see. Yeah. But it's kind of part of the book right it's part yeah, of the like, mental yeah kind of thing yeah. and so like i kind of have to push that aside and be like yeah like let me just focus on this text box real quick that's laid off into the jumble and then i'll get back to enjoy it. you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean that's yeah, just that's how, how the got, book like, is structured i, I kind of got like that first yeah. but then once once i got to second issue it oh, yeah. felt a little bit more because i guess maybe i was just kind of used to what he was oh, throwing yeah. at me on the first one but uh yeah it's a. Uh, it's been pretty cool. I the artwork's really different, that's for sure. But I, I like it. I do it. like it. Yeah, the artwork it is definitely re- one of the better parts for me. I, and it does a really good job. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm curious on where he's gonna be going with more, like I said, of the story. And then also to uh this one kind of not explained too much, but it introduced the black hat people a little bit more and who it's those so, other kind of yeah. side characters are. Um, so I'm more curious on what that is now too as well. Yeah, they definitely opened it up in this chapter more you know world as opposed to before it was kind of still set in like a kind of one shot mm-hmm. uh you know this any any mystery anything now there's a plot on the overture you know what i mean there's mm-hmm. actually something going on which is something i think it was time for because you obviously you could continue doing those single shot mysteries and it would still make a decent uh comic but I think yeah. something like this benefits greatly from the overarching story, just with the way it's a very mental book. You know what I mean? It's very much mm-hmm. about the mind and perception and, and things like that. And once again, like uh, I really enjoy the art. And the sh- once again, once you get to the understanding that the structuring is part of the reading experience for the book, right? Mm-hmm. It's important for like, because different books have... So, for example, Sandman, right? That, I feel like, is a big thing of the same. Like, reading those boxes from Neil Gaiman is, a, is an experience in itself. It's got, like, all his calligraphy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and obviously, he's not doing the, that exactly. But just the point of being, like, it's it's part of the experience. It takes to the Im- yeah, the immersion, I think, a little bit to the yeah. next level when you're reading your book. So it And it makes it fun read, So to me. makes you part of that world a little bit better so yeah yeah i get what you mean on that one so it's really cool the way even more than it. that i like that it's unique and thought out one of my biggest problems with some anime is they or not anime but manga is that their structure is very very similar to each other like the way pages yeah. are laid out the way scenes are structured the way boxing and art is done mm-hmm. it, it sometimes is a bit repetitive whereas i feel like in comic books you often get more 
illustrators and stuff who break or, out of the page. Yeah, they break out of the page. And Marvel did not like things like that at first. <laughs> they were they, like, no, no. Break. And you know who actually started yeah. that was more Tom McFarlane. Yeah, uh, they would always sure get mad at him. Bad. They would be like, no, you can't do that. And he's they've, like, why? why they've definitely <laughs> gotten much better, though. Uh, I can't remember who the artist is on, artist is on uh, Jane Foster's Thor run, but he was really good at taking illustration, not necessarily in paneling, but in uh, he was very good at uh, onomatopoeias in panel. I remember him doing that a lot. Where he yeah, he see would, like crazy stuff like that on the yeah the end scene and see like just the where the the coloring is moving over the panel borders, where the panel borders are kind of like chopped up in the top section. There, mm -hmm. it's just nice little things like that and attentions to details that add to a piece of work it doesn't make a piece of work but it adds to it right like yeah i've never heard of this artist either martin simmons simmons well, let's see. i have i don't it, his work almost looks like um uh alexander shar what's his name he's doing kill uh kill of philadelphia or something like that the title um but he he almost has that same kind of type of style but his is a little bit different Let's see what we got. Uh, okay, I see. He I think did it's Alexander Shaw. He's actually name. done some work for Immortal Hulk, Jessica Jones, okay. Quicksilver. Those look like his big ones. But he was on the paperback in the Green Door and Immortal Hulk number nine. Okay. So Immortal Hulk. That's the one where he's fighting uh, Absorbing Man. Okay. I don't. Okay, he's a penciler. Okay. Well, or he probably does more than that, but he's listed as the penciler on that particular title. Uh, all right. Well, that's that's good then. So, yeah, it's been a really good story so far. Uh, refresher. I've been reading that one as well. And then, um, like I said, I've been reading, I've catched up on all that amazing Spider Man stuff and uh, curious on where that Norman Osborn story is going to go from here. Um, caught up on uh, there's this other book I'm reading. It's called Red Mother. That one's been pretty good. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Mortal. I like the title. Uh, let me see what I have on my list that I was actually. I definitely caught up on some of the Star Wars stuff, like the Bounty Hunter and. Other um, are you going to be reading uh, the new stuff that they're doing, the New Republic? In uh, I think it starts in January. I'm going to try as long as it's it's good <laughs> you know what i mean that's always what it but i mean honestly almost all of the star wars comic stuff is excellent yeah so it's gonna be uh it's not gonna be done by marvel though uh idw i think yeah no idw has actually been picking up a lot of side books from marvel again they actually released some this week i think uh they released marvel action avengers one and two it's like battles clone adventures or something right they, star wars adventures they're also taking a couple star wars and some teenage mutant ninja turtles uh as well yeah as sonic they've been doing uh yeah turtles for issue now i think they're on like 110 now yeah 111 they, they actually what did they just release i think they released uh another uh yusagi yojimbo's new one yeah Wanders. they uh they just did that one which are just reprints of old stories that he did yeah as still, a collection. i only picked it up because uh peach momomoko did that cover yeah i've like, been enjoying her good. artwork she got good art. uh so what else did i watch i read uh the new metal stuff from dc the new injustice stuff i haven't i gotta read more of the justice league stuff but a lot of the side titles just really lost me in dc this this whole oh i read future state they released their future state press i wanted presents. to read that i didn't get a chance to read it's, it because that's it's the one with their more characters they don't really talk about right like no Black Lightning. no it's it's just a whole new thing Whole okay thing. yeah because i've seen it no it, maybe it, it's maybe something else i was looking at you might be looking at one of the vertigo or one it of wasn't the even goals. it wasn't even a book actually it was a um, yeah no it's like an information it was that one where uh, yeah yeah they were doing the uh yeah they're showing all their uh it's the all new characters future. that they're going to be doing yeah it's all so they are going to be doing a black batman that's like but they're not going to do like they're not replacing shit. him though they no, said they're just going to do a mini series no what they're doing is they literally are launching like future which is so dumb because they've already kind of done it before it a lot 
And so is Marvel. Well, they learned their lesson the last time when they did New Fifty Two. <laughs> and this isn't. It's not like that. It's not a relaunch. It's uh. It's, yeah, they're it's just basically kind of their, it's, in the future, it's DC right? twenty ninety nine basically. Yeah, that's what I've that's and, what I've heard. It, okay. But the difference being, they're going to do a bunch of different future eras. So they'll go fifty years, then a hundred, then a thousand, blah 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 okay. blah blah. Which is okay. cool, but one they kind of have done that with the Batman Beyond stuff and Legion of Superheroes, yeah. and and I I mean I that's not to say they can't do good work, but this really doesn't sit well with me. I don't think this is great. Mm. I I don't have high expectations for this. If it comes out great, awesome. I just don't have a high who's expectations. All, but who's writing all this stuff? There's they, a lot. It's writers. it's a ton of shit. That's the other problem. Is it's so much okay but it, who's some of their, their big name writers uh, that they're trying to say no, are gonna be doing some of the stuff like they didn't really even highlight a bunch of writers they they, they okay. were highlighting the stories and then i mean you have your writers on there so like let's just i'll just look at one of the first pages uh brandon thomas and daniel sampier jeffrey thorm and tom rainey brandon vietti and dale englishen yeah, Ooh. see, I know none of these writers, <laughs> but I think there is because they're all DC writers. Robbie Thompson and Javi Fernandez. Here, let me get another page. Maybe there's some better, more, not better, more known names on some of All right, so you got Bendis and Riley Rosmo doing okay, one. Okay, there we go. There's the Legion Bendis. of Superheroes. But, I mean, Bendis is one of their new highlights, and he's not popular in the DC community. And I, I think they just like hired him. a bunch of new they, uh, writers. Yeah, they they, were I, I think they did as well. The funny thing is Marvel actually did something similar with something else but yeah they're doing the artists they were highlighting these new artists and peach momoko is actually on that list <laughs> so she got uh i think a contract deal with the marvel so she's going to be doing a lot of covers for them nice uh trying to see some more all right future states yeah the future the other thing is i think that's the whole point of future state is they're introducing mostly new artists yeah that's what it was too. so they got okay, like yeah, jeremy adams brand well easton i think stuff but uh Megan was Martin, Son Lewis, Brand Vietti. I actually recognize the name, but I just don't remember from what. They actually got past credits for a lot of these people. So let's see what they worked on. Writers for Supernatural Justice League, DC Superheroes, Mortal Kombat Legends, uh past credits, comic and animation writer who worked on Thundercats, Agent Carter, and Transformers War Cybertron. Okay. Writer for man, they got a couple supernatural writers. They really needed new jobs, huh? Yeah, because <laughs> the, well, the, the series the just then, ended. Right? Yeah, the That's series just ended. Uh, do you okay, see superhero well, girls? I heard it was a good show. Maybe Coyotes. they'll be good. <laughs> no, I mean Supernatural's pretty good. It has issues of its own, but. Wait, so black yeah, writer. The thing is, though, they, they got to think. Well, they probably know how to write for kind of a because com comics is different when you're writing. The thing is, more than comics, or more, I guess comics, but comics versus TV. Yes, it's a different so that's format. a yeah. different format for sure. So, um, well, I mean, that's why I say maybe they'll have a, a good understanding because they there are just basically storyboards, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll see how they do. I, I mean, the whole point of doing new people too is to try new things. Yeah, you there, always there, got. There's you know, my that, problem wasn't even with the artists once again; it was more with the concepts, and I wasn't. The problem is, once again, the number, man. If you look through that list and count the number of new series that are just kind of random new series, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty ambitious to try to make people love all these new characters, even if they're based on old characters. I think they're going to run into very many similar issues as all new Marvel had. All new, all different Marvel is very similar in my mind. Obviously, it's different because of the timescape. But mm -hmm. the fact is, you're going to be replacing comic slots with new characters that are, are the old characters but different so it's gonna mm -hmm. be an interesting take who knows it could be great i'm yeah. just i'm just basing it on what i think and feel right now based on what yeah. i've seen yeah you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah what you've seen in the past you know hasn't really right. worked I, out i'm, I'm out, comparing so. it to the all new doll day for marvel man as much as i may have liked some of those titles it didn't do well there was yeah like i didn't care for totally totally awesome hulk i didn't yeah there really were ups care. and downs for a lot of them, man like it wasn't so. a fuck it, it wasn't a strong time uh the other thing was in marvel i did maestro which has been coming out pretty good uh, i still got to catch up on that i only good. read the first uh, issue i had a little bit of an issue with this last one but aside from that it's pretty good uh the other thing we had was they released this one called marvel that was very interesting uh dr doom 
Shang-Chi didn't Which is about to end, right? As you just said, I, I think, think so, they yeah. were going to end in December. Yeah, they most um, likely are. Uh, Werewolf by Night number two was pretty interesting. and It, it kind of opened okay. up a bit. Uh, did I check this one out? I can't remember if I started Tartarus or not. No, I didn't start it, but I checked it out. It looked cool. Tartarus from Image. I think you might have mentioned it to me. I don't remember. That one, I don't... I, I've seen it in the store, but I haven't read that one. Um, this one, actually, I still haven't read, but this one sounds pretty interesting. It's called I Walk With Monsters. That actually does sound interesting. Um, this is from a new pub... Well, kind of somewhat new publisher. They've been around maybe for two years now, but they're Vault Comics. And... Um, They've been having some pretty big hits here, but the uh, story goes in JC's uh, past as the important man who took away her brother. Now, uh, now JC has David, who sometimes transforms into a terrifying beast. Together, they found a way to live and hunt, sniffing out men who prey on the vulnerable. But uh, JC and David are about to run into important man again. A haunting story about the monster that walks beside us all that, and sometimes lurks with, within. All right. I mean, it sounds interesting. I like the title more than anything, but yeah, usually titles give titles give a, I, I give it's, impo <laughs> it's important for me to have a good title. I mean, it's not the most important thing, but that's what catches the first thing is you hear usually is the title and then you go for the description, which usually is weaker than the title. Most times, <laughs> most people don't know how to write good big book descriptions to entice people, I feel. They write good book descriptions to that explain the book, mm -hmm. but they don't do it, I feel, sometimes in a way that makes you want to read the book. I see, yeah. Like, there are some really good books I've read with very bad descriptions of the, of the series <laughs> run. Um, another Did you one... Read we Live, we live uh, number two yet? Which one? Uh, we Live number two. Have you read that one yet? I don't think I've read it yet. No. That's the, the one where... Um... Because I know you read number one. That's the one with the little kids who are. Uh, it's in the very few uh, future where the aliens kind of give them a bracelet and they have to go to this location in order to. Yeah, you told. Live. I do remember you were talking about that one, and it was a selection of only so many kids can go. So yes, and yeah, yes. I did check out the first one. I just haven't checked out the second one. I think because okay. I just yeah. didn't see it in the big list of shit on my list. Because. <laughs> uh, that was the other one, Colonel Weird Cosmogog. Oh, I need to cat. I need to read that first issue too. And Bar uh, Barbalian as well just came out too. Oh, I haven't checked that one out either. I have checked yes. out Cosmogog, but not Barbalian. Yeah, I've been because uh, I guess that's what he's doing now is just doing like these little spin-off miniseries for his world, which is cool. Um, I he I heard they're supposed to do a TV series for that uh, really? Black Hammer, but yeah, I don't know when that will ever happen. I think it's an interesting one, but it it's gonna be it's gonna take a little bit of artfulness to get the TV done series done right because it's very much a concept piece. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, this book maybe you want to check out. Um, I only picked it up because it was but uh, Gerard Way was uh, writing, so same guy who does uh, Umbrella Academy, so. <laughs> He did pretty good on that book, so I was like, I ah, might as well check this out. It's only a mini series too, I think. I believe I don't think it's a ongoing series, but it's called uh, "True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys National Anthem." <laughs> I've heard, I've seen some of the Killjoys stuff, but I haven't seen that. One. Yeah, so I thought I'd check it out. Um, we'll see how it goes. I don't really. I kind of didn't even, I don't think I even read what it was really about. Again, I just kind of picked it up because <laughs> the writer. So I was like, oh, let's see. I'll give it a shot. Let's see if it, how he's good as he is. Um, let's see here. There wasn't really much else. I've been trying to, to catch up. Um, yeah, there's really not much else I can think of right now. Um, maybe just this also too, Razor Blades. This is something else that James Tinian is doing. Um He's not writing the whole thing. It's like a big, uh, not big, but it's just uh, maybe about a hundred and about a hundred twenty-eight page book here. But anyways, uh, yeah, he did this. In, uh, it's uh, kind of like a little indie book that he did on his website, and um, he got kind of several writers and artists to kind of do like an anthology kind of little okay. story. Uh, but so it's pretty cool. Looks I like checking those out. I mean, he does pretty good work, so. I mean, so yeah, these ones uh, unfortunately you can only get these from the website. 
and uh but you can still buy them digitally yeah um but if you want a raw copy they they're, they were selling out really fast for him but uh yeah and it looks like he's gonna keep it going on because it did such good the first round so he's got a got a few uh more lined up here and the next one for i think the end of this year and then uh two more for next year and then he's got this other new character that he's coming up with that we're going to see a little bit more of and i'm kind of excited i'm not excited but i'm just more curious of who this character is uh he calls him kill boy kill boy oh okay and here's a better uh probably better picture of him right here with the because they gave us a little So we'll see. Oh, oh, yeah, there it is. There it is, right there. Okay, I thought I could see it. He just has kind of a more. Uh, uh, yeah, he's got this weird kind of like, uh, I guess you could say Oni mask almost. It's not, but uh, he's got these like three X's on his uh, forehead. He's got the kind of teeth <laughs> smile and. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see where this where this goes with that character. But uh, yeah, so there's that, and he's got a couple other things planned, and then. Uh, I guess since we're kind of still in the comics uh today uh if anybody else wants to try and go get these but uh target uh had these uh retro carded x-men figures come out today and they did uh rogue wow so this one they they already did a while back but i guess she was kind of uh hard to get because that run was i think done in like 2016 so uh she was getting pretty scarce out there and uh at I think she's going like maybe for 70 the original but now the hasbro went ahead and did her as a retro figure nice um so it's cool i really like these uh card back retro stuff it's it really brings like uh the kid in me because <laughs> just because that's just what i remember seeing in the stores is these retro uh card figures so it's cool to see that um so yeah they have rogue and then you you know you can't have rogue without you know yeah but yeah your boy Gambit. <laughs> so yeah, they did him too. I think this is pretty cool. Hasbro did really cool. They got like these. Um, he's they got his little hands with the cards kind of shooting out of his hands like that. So and I think it's they got his even his bow staff on there too. So um, yeah, really cool because these ones are uh, the '90s costumes as well. So uh, I really enjoy these ones from kind of the cartoon show. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite runs of X-Men. And obviously, it's because the co cartoon run is so similar to the comic run, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, very, very much of it is pretty much spot on. Um, it seems like cool stuff. Once again, the, co the, the figures thriving during this time where other mediums are struggling, which is good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I seen a, a fellow collector today and... Uh, <laughs> I had uh, I had I have to show you that one too, but it, they had come up with the Jim Lee uh, st uh, Storm figure too. So she's wearing that white, uh, you know, silk with uh, kind of like the. Oh, she has that little kind of like I guess like a cape hanging down for her. But anyways, uh, so th I had that in my hand and I seen him come in and he's like, "Where did you find those?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm just found this right here." And he's like, "What?" what? And I know there's supposed to be like a palette, but I don't know where it was, but. Uh, he's like, yeah, where's the paladin? I'm like, oh, I didn't see it. This is where I just found it was right here. And he's like, dang, I've been trying to look for that cyborg Spider-Man because they came out with uh, – they're doing retro Spider-Man figures as well. So they're doing like all the 90s stuff too that Toys Biz did back in the 90s. So uh, they got like a – they came out with a negative Spider-Man from oh, wow, uh, yeah. where he goes into the negative uh, universe. And then uh, – then they have, and then it comes with a negative pizza, so it's all black and white. <laughs> um, and then they came out, yeah, with the storm, the Jim Lee storm, um, and then Cyborg Spider Man so far. And then they have a couple other stuff coming out. They have the J. Jonah Jameson action figure and Black Cat coming out here as well. Does he, does uh, they, he have like pictures of Spider Man? <laughs> you know, I don't think it was that, but he had the newspaper. He had the Daily Bugle newspaper. <laughs> That's all right. Suit, suitcase, I think. Um, I would have went with the he, pictures, man. That, that would have been priceless. That thing would have been cool, yeah. That would have been hard to do, but it would have been funny as hell. But that's but, still uh, yeah. real cool. So that's cool. Yeah, these are, these are exclusive to Target, so I would uh, recommend going... Um, now, I think you could still buy them online. Uh, usually these things sell out fast, but it looks like Hasbro is really going to mass produce these guys. So uh, they're not going to be hard to get right now. That's what a lot of collectors have been complaining about right now. It's just a lot of these <laughs> figures that have been really hard to get. 
And uh, the hard one, my hardest ones to try to find, I finally found it was they they came out with some new uh, Halo uh, action figures, six inch figures as oh, well. Okay. So uh, and it's from a company that was kind of funny is uh, Jar uh, Jarwars. I can't remember the full name company, but they actually started off selling toys in Family Dollar. And now, now they're kind of they're kind of competing with the big dogs, like with Hasbro action figures now and a couple other stuff. So um, it's it's cool to see yeah, some really good articulated uh, Halo figures. <laughs> I mean, it's and, really uh, just cool to see competition in those areas because for a long time there was a real stagnant kind of like four or five people who made things. Yeah, yeah, Hasbro, uh, Migos, Mattel. Mattel. Uh, and Migos stuff, I always, I never really see those sell very well. Like I, I always mean, see they're, them just they're a collector's in. piece, kind of like uh, Beanie Babies. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're not like a popular sale, but they're always around. <laughs> yeah, there there has been a few that were. I think the only ones I would get is when they did their uh, Universal Monster ones. Just like didn't like their mummy was okay. I just don't like the design of Migos. I prefer yeah. the like. 90s articulated yeah. plastic to the kind well, of well yeah yeah i see what you mean yeah uh so yeah there's another couple other big name companies that are like not really um hasbro and i like uh, i know super seven was a company that was kind of like not a big company and now they're uh really big and they got a big license they're doing the the ninja turtles right now yeah. and uh people are loving their ninja like they're all sold out their first wave right now you can't get those anywhere right now anymore um they uh what they did is because NECA's doing the turtles too but they're doing the live action turtles but they're and then they're also doing the cartoon turtles um but what uh super seven's doing is they're doing the turtles that came out the action figures versions of them in the 80s okay. uh, but they're just modernizing them with better articulation better paint better just a bunch of everything yeah better, all, and, better molds and some of this i wonder bigger size too they're not the three inch size <laughs> that they were back in the day they, i think they're six inch figures that's cool um, i will say i wonder if some of the reason that these companies are now more competitive and the market is wider is just the improvement in technology on modeling and molding oh definitely yeah because um, i mean back in the day obviously i'd have presses and all this stuff and now you just buy a decent 3d printer or a couple and you can kind yeah. of get some some decent quotas well, I know NECA say says they do still all their modeling in house, like with like actual modeling clay. They're oh, like yeah, probably I one mean, of the very few still left I mean, that do yeah. it. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, definitely people out there doing it. Yeah. yeah, there's still not that many. Yeah, they're probably like yeah, very few that still do. But Hasbro, yeah, they they're all into the new stuff there. Um, I think they just started doing last year uh, a new technology that's been out for a while already with the other companies, but they're doing like um, face technology where face they're modeling, able to yeah. kind of where they're able to like basically get almost screen accurate to who the actor is and there, there is some where you look at it like that does look like Hugh Jackman <laughs> or that does look like the girl from Mystique or, <laughs> um, so yeah there's a there's a few that they're that look really good now and uh yeah that's kind of why I got into it too now is just because yeah like the the figures have gotten really better than when we were kids in the 90s that's for sure better articulation yeah. better face better models um I mean I there will be some QC issues but you know that's what I guess you you get when things are mass produced in a in a giant Chinese factory. I mean, pretty uh, much, yeah. I mean, you, you get what you not quality paper. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, you may have like a little bit of the eyes like not painted right, yeah. like oh, okay. <laughs> well, so, okay. or, like the blue. Yeah, so you're just like that happens. So can't complain about it too much but <laughs> no i mean especially but, um, for the way they run now it's just like so yeah it's been cool though yeah to see toys are still doing good um there's been yeah quite a few runs of star wars stuff for sure coming out they uh they did the whole new uh ahsoka star wars line from the season seven so they had all the clone troopers with uh, her face uh mask kind of and then they had uh the the loyal uh, loyalist mandalorians and also the mall uh, uh mandalorian so they had their little horns um so those are pretty cool um and then yeah the the face mold on or just the face everything on the soka just looks really screen uh animation to everything so it looks really good the, so there's that stuff um NECA came out with this really cool gremlin Santa Claus. <laughs> so one of the gremlins is wearing a Santa Claus outfit, and he's got uh, Gizmo in the little uh, Santa outfit or uh, sack. 
and the candy cane as well. So that's that would be cool to decorate with the Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, it's been cool to see some toys come out. They still got still got a lot more things planned out <laughs> uh, for sure. Uh, they got they've been really hitting hard with the Mandalorian stuff as well. They uh, as well too. If you guys want um, Target this week. Uh, on Tuesday, we'll have uh, in their stores, if you can try to go get it, it's only exclusive to them as well. It's going to be, um, I guess you can call it a builder pack for the Mandalorian. And he's going to come with Baby Yoda, and Baby Yoda comes with this little uh, hovering pod. <laughs> and they'll come with a little stand so you can put the hovering pod there so it looks like he really is off the ground. And uh, it will come with the, uh, the credits. It will come with uh, detonator, a um, couple other little accessories as well. So <laughs> uh, I think the price tag for it was going to be thirty dollars, but uh, yeah, cool. If you guys are really into Mandalorian oh, stuff, man. I think that would be worth it. <laughs> and just oh, the and uh, now, the, face, so the helmet better. comes off too. Nice. But I would recommend probably keeping the helmet on. the The face, uh, the face sculpt wasn't the best on this one. I I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> well, they never um, they didn't know, get to see him, man. He's not. He never takes the helmet off. I, I, I know you have to look it up online, and you 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 might see you'd be like, yeah, I don't know what Hasbro was doing when they came out with that one, but oh well, just keep the helmet on. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, the Mandalorian has well, how many episodes are in the season? Uh, I think we've well altogether, it's been what twelve episodes, I think. Something right like now, that. yeah, because we only had like I think six episodes on the last. One. I don't think it was that much. Can't remember. No, maybe it was like. I think we're I think on episode like fourteen. Eight episodes. Yeah. I think last season was eight, because we just released episode six, which is chapter fourteen. Let's see. Let's see what they got structured for season two. The releases. So season two looks like it's going to have eight episodes as well. Okay. Um. But yeah, we we've definitely passed the halfway point now. We've only got three more episodes in this season. And we got a lot of big reveals in this last episode, which was cool. I mean, yes. at least I thought it was cool. Yes, I thought it was cool. It was, um, and I love that they didn't like waste no time at all. Yeah, they to show really... the character. They were just like, "This is it. Here we go, guys." <laughs> <It's like here. laughs> and it was, it was awesome. I thought, uh, I thought Rosario did good. Um, I think she understood the character very well. Um, the way her mannerism was, I don't know. It just felt like Ahsoka to me, uh, yeah. to at least. No, I felt like she um, did a great job. Uh, the cool stuff about Baby Yoda's background, obviously, getting his name, yes. all that good stuff. Uh, learning a little more about, I guess, his past, but stuff we kind of had already inferred in a lot of ways, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. You know? kind of knew he had the Force and stuff, but it was interesting to learn that he was trained by many Jedi masters, was, not just like... Yeah, and he if he was studying on the Temple of the Thing, he would have been one of the Jedi, not obviously the ones that Anakin got, but he would have been part of that group of Jedi at the Temple. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting to think about that and see the, the kind of pull they have. And obviously his character and race match that timing. Like, he obviously could have been there with his long-lived... Yeah. Yeah, so they, they really planned that out right, I think. And, you know, Dave Fillion, who's the uh, creator of the Clone Wars uh, animated series stuff, um, who directed this uh, this episode, um, which is only fitting, right? Because <laughs> he did Ahsoka, so he's the only one that really should probably do this one as well. So um, I thought he did good, at, you know, like I said, yeah, connecting it all together. Um, and even people are saying, like, they could do a young Luke Skywalker now. You should look up Boss Logic on Facebook. He did a already a rendition of uh, a young Luke Skywalker, and I can't remember the actor he picked, but people were like, "That's it, right there. That that looks exactly like him." Um, I, so I don't know. They could do something like that. You know, I, who knows? I don't think we're in the right time period unless we do a flashback. So we're after we're post Empire. Well, this is before Luke, right? Because this is no, after, no. This uh, is post. They keep saying okay. the empire's fallen. This is post Empire. Yeah, see, and that's what I was kind of getting confused. So then, too. I was you, trying you to figure it out. You I'll couldn't look do at the... a, a young Luke. Whoever made that uh, reference. Once again, if you do a flashback, totally different thing. But as yeah. far as I understand it, just in this last episode, Ahsoka, Ahsoka said, "All you know, the Jedi are gone," and he said, "So is the Empire, but still they hunt him." I'm pretty sure though that's an exact quote, but I could be wrong. And I mean, maybe it is pre-fall of the Empire. 
Well, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because he was posting up, like, stuff, too. Like, we, here, here's we, him now with Ezra, like, older. Yeah, cause I it's mean, re- it's it's not, like, impossible, but it would be mm-hmm. it would be a younger Luke than was in the new stuff, I guess. But it wouldn't be younger than the original series. Ah, uh, that's who the, Oh, you know, that's who it was. Yeah, Sebastian Stan. Yeah, he's the one everyone says looks just like Mark Hamill when he was young. They, they've been doing that for years. <laughs> and it, and the guy, yeah, you'll have to look it up on Boss Logic, but he he's an artist, too, that's done some Marvel covers as well. But he does a bunch of other stuff, too. He does but, everything. Uh, he's just a, he's uh, a digital artist that does everything. Yeah, he's everything. cool, though, but, like, he, yeah, he yeah, did Boss this, and i like, cool that, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, like, I could see that. <laughs> no, I, but, I definitely uh, like the idea. just don't know how they'd wrap it in here for the current timeline right and obviously once again i could be wrong in the thing well no because they also say that alderaan was destroyed remember see i didn't i don't I kind of remember Rem- I heard that from it. last episode when she's oh. talking you're from alderaan right remember yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember, I, I, yeah. all right now i'm pretty sure we're at the very least mid uh there's no way this is pre original uh trilogy but <laughs> Once again, they could obviously do a flashback. They could do a bunch of stuff, and they could mm-hmm. show Luke now. I mean, Luke is out in the universe at this point. I um, I don't know because we don't know if this is pre-current trilogy or whatever with uh yeah Ray and them. We don't. I don't know exactly when this is. My assumption was this was post-current trilogy, but here, I could on. be wrong. Timeline. Let me see here. Yeah, timeline for the Mandalorian. Oh, man, I gotta clean this keyboard. I got so like, yeah, it says right here. Yeah, the Mandalorian takes place nine years. Oh, after A New Hope, and interestingly, five years after the Empire's defeat and Return of the Jedi. So this is between uh, the original trilogy and the new, tr- the newest okay. trilogy. Okay, that I can feel. And once again, now you have great opportunity to have Luke back in the story. Uh, just not a younger Luke than was in. But once again, Sebastian Shaw yeah. is about the age, in my opinion, that Luke, if they yeah. they got to do it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he gets older, he's just yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, I really enjoyed it. It was, was cool. good. Yeah, the, uh, the it was whole... interesting to see Ahsoka finally be live action. I think that was just the best thing to ever just see. You know, a lot of us, I think, a lot of Star Wars fans kind of just never thought that probably happened and they just thought it was always just going to be an animated character and i mean i'm but, sure you know there, there's been so many hardcore fans now with her now and at first she wasn't very popular is what i've heard and no, no. uh she and uh, she was very annoying time. is what a lot of people used to say <laughs> she's still uh, pretty annoying but but uh, people have come to love her like yeah. really a lot well she ended up being a very interesting counterbalance to anakin in the in the yeah, different areas the very end yeah and there's just a lot about a character that's likable i mean even if she's a bit annoying sometimes i'm sure people will hate <laughs> us for saying that but i do think she was a bit off-putting even in this episode but it's part of her personality and so i thought it was yeah. a good point of putting it in there uh she did a really good job acting there was a real good makeup job in my opinion there were a couple oh times gosh, where they had that was really good they had a couple times where the head bent headpiece kept bending but i think it was either just supposed to be that way or I, at first you know when i had seen her it looked very smooth but then i was like thinking i was like w- wouldn't it be more kind of wrinkled up right there if it's always kind of like i don't know Bent. always cornered in like that i don't yeah. know who knows i, I don't know because <laughs> I, I, don't know I, I gotta been, watch like, more really of the animation or... yeah <laughs> and that's really where it comes down to like i i don't know if i've seen enough animation of her regularly to like judge it so i was like i'm passing that and everything else was really cool yeah uh once again, my only joke, the only thing I made fun of was the whole joke meme going around where it's like, I need to take him to a Jedi. Ahsoka Tano is on this planet. I said, I'm Jedi, not a citizen. <laughs> uh, but besides that, I mean, it's just hilarious. And obviously it's a great tie in. They did some great tie ins from that to other stuff in the future. Hopefully it looks like a lot of people are. I saw though complaining. They're just like, I feel like the series is less about the Mandalorian now and more about opening up for other series. And I'm like, I guess, but what's the Mandalorian story without this? Yeah. Without Grogu and the point of running around doing all these things for people, what is the story? He gets there, there and it's be over. An end game here and eventually. even beyond an end game, like every journey has pieces to it. Like yeah. you don't skip from the beginning of the journey to the very end of the journey and just say fuck everything in between just because it didn't actually go directly to the journey. Mm. 
you have which is what star wars movies do all the time you're like well, hold on what happened? <laughs> what happened here what what we went from here to here. i'm gone <laughs> oh well you gotta watch the clone wars anime stuff that'll explain everything for you guys they, <laughs> they did that more recently in years for sure uh, but I, you know i hope that this this brings a lot more like i know there's 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 a lot of star wars fans but i know there's not like really diehard fans who jump into everything like animation comic books there's only gonna be people who like oh i love the movies and that's really that's it i hope this kind of brings more people to kind of you know go enjoy those animated shows now and kind of go learn about ahsoka a little bit more and see who where she comes from and stuff like that because i know there's gonna be quite a few people who are still oh yeah i mean even (laughs) even me knowing a bit about it's like man i gotta go back and remember all this stuff because it's a lot of stuff it is um but no i think it definitely opens up and i would love to see that two people enjoying all of the different aspects of the medium you know i always felt like legends caught a big one when they erased it when they really could have just incorporated it and done well i mean they're changes. doing a good job of like taking it itty they're, bits and they pieces. are they, they're doing like, a decent job it's one that was a legend character the problem and... is they're only doing it on the side stuff and doing it well the main yeah. series is, uh, is yeah. even the people like i i mean i didn't hate the new trilogy it was fine but i felt like the original legend's story was better mm, okay it, i felt like it had a more dynamic flow and obviously i'm bit biased because i read it first and i prefer legends but <laughs> have, you, uh, have you read online what george lucas's idea was for the uh final act of his star wars stuff uh, i guess Darth been... Maul was supposed to come back <laughs> yeah there was a couple different ones not saying lucas's was the best but but it was just it's it curious different. you know yeah. just to you know see where maybe it could have went or you know because you know once you make a movie that's it it's ingrained in. You, yeah, people are not done. getting rid of it. No, nope. and that's kind of was, <laughs> what was my problem with a lot of the new stuff. I felt like it wasn't as fully fleshed out and developed in the new movies. Things such mm. as Finn having no resolution well, to the story. He was mad at that point too. Like he, I think he's now kind of not harassing them, but I think he's coming back at the studio saying he's he's kind of upset because they told him at the beginning that his character was going to have more of a, you know, more to it, and it ended up being really nothing <laughs> yeah and most so, characters in that really got got short short staffed i mean yeah it really did i did feel like that like because at the yeah like when the first movie came out i really felt like finn you know they, they really kind of brought him up to be like he was going to be something important it, even almost like to, uh, to the point where i thought he was going to be a jedi as well himself but it, it just felt i don't know they like i said they just kind of dropped the ball on his character and said no we're not going to do that story anymore we're just kind of just going to focus more on ray and that's it <laughs> yeah it's uh, like all right ray and kylo go for it um yeah it was more of it was more of a relationship between her and kylo most of the time which also really had a really weird drop up it was fine it's just it wasn't it definitely wasn't my favorite part of a trilogy yeah um, no no and then like too they did play on the nostalgia a little bit too much maybe um they could have they could have done a few but they they did I feel it like out they just the, whole, the problem whole wasn't even the nostalgia it's that you, tra- <laughs> you can't trade nostalgia for substance yes that's what i'm trying to say is that they were trying to you know use that as like oh well we'll just have do that yeah, like that yeah, and people yeah. are gonna love it nope <laughs> yep nope that um, don't work that way uh besides that i mean what else what else do we have to cover for this week? um you know, let's see here. So I know, I know Wanda. We know WandaVision is everything's coming out January. We uh, oh, Hopefully. did you hear the news of supposedly uh, uh, King Kong uh, ver- or yeah, King Kong versus Godzilla is actually just going to come to streaming now. I did not know um, that. No. Supposedly Netflix wanted to buy it. Time Warner shut them out, and because they uh, HBO Max wants to get it. Hmm. I really got to set up my HBO Max account. I have it for free, and I never use it. Uh, <laughs> i just it hasn't been a lot I'm of shows just a little disappointed though that they're gonna do streaming but i you know i see why they have to but again it, i just feel like that's a movie that that deserves that's a big screen big movie screen. yeah for sure uh did you hear they're pushing wonder woman onto streaming oh yes they are well actually they they will be doing it but then they also will be doing theaters too they said I- I guess at certain theaters, but we'll so, see. Yeah, because, this Chris, this Christmas, they're saying that, on, uh, but certain HBO cities, Max. 
Because they're saying they'll push it to theaters, but you can only push it to theaters in cities who, where you can actually do it. Yeah, we're, we're shut actually, down again. Yeah, we're not locked down again. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, no movies going on for us right now, as far as we'll I understand. See, we'll see what happens there. But they yeah, um, I know HBO Max was going to do it on uh, Christmas. Christmas Day, you'll be able to watch it. That'll be cool. I mean, the the coolest thing I saw about that is that you don't have to pay extra. Uh, yes. which is great. They and they didn't I mean, do the I, Disney thing. Yeah, but... I think they did that purposefully to spite Disney. But yeah, uh, hey, I'm happy for it. Hey, that's good for the people. So yeah, I you know, and I kind of see. T- well, we'll see how, it, because the Wonder Woman movie maybe was made. I would say a lower budget movie just because they don't. Because the Mulan has a lot of. I don't know. No, because I guess Wonder Woman's really a depends. pretty top A box movie. I mean, I would say that it's at, I would at just least say on more par. of the scenes that they were shot in Mulan were more, you know, big landscapes and no. But then I guess you can, you really can just go somewhere where that's at. You don't have to really CGI no, it. No, but... and and even beyond that, on top of that, we don't know what the new Wonder Woman looks like. As far as we know, it's equally yeah, that's what landscape I'm saying too. We don't mass. really know how much. Yeah, until we watch the see and see how much work they uh, I, actually put into I, it. I'd say uh, based on the basic, because uh, they basically spend a roughly similar amount of money on all the superhero movies, with a couple exceptions, and it's usually in the area of a couple hundred million dollars between. So, uh, but I mean, that's that's some cool stuff. The streaming things are interesting to see that dynamic pop up more, and I mean, for some of us, it's been like a kind of like finally thing and other people aren't happy i guess but obviously the what sh- can you do yeah i mean it's the way <laughs> the way of the world you know what i mean and obviously yeah. i'd like to go to a theater and see some of these big movies as well but given the option of not seeing it and seeing it on streaming a lot of them i definitely would take the streaming yeah. obviously godzilla yeah. versus king kong is definitely one of those ones i feel like is a big screen yeah i hope they when it gets a little closer they'll say hey maybe we're gonna do streaming now but if you still want to go see it in theaters we're gonna have a the big release in june or something i don't know well yeah and we just gotta see where the world goes because we're still we're still even figuring out what we're gonna do to respond to all this stuff and getting vaccines out and obviously we're not a science or politics show so we can't talk about the efficacies of that but it's just it impacts our you know our areas so we got to think about it life. Yep. yeah so <laughs> yep uh but besides that i mean we got more comics coming black winter stuff shit actually didn't the first chapter of spider-man black winter release yeah it was like a little mini series that they're doing was yeah, that it was uh, the fine. symbiote spider-man yeah. or something yeah. like that yep it was which all right. they, they did two other mini series right before that one um which was pretty good i think that was the one the last one they did was the one where they did like uh the venom issue okay remember it was like that reporter and he oh, fuck, i can't even remember, remember it it was kind of a sad story though um it was like the first venom ever and he ended up being a re- was he a reporter i can't remember what he was but something happened towards the end and it was kind of a tragic little end for him and they kind of just left he they left it as that he's not going to be a character that ever comes back yeah. <laughs> it was just a sad little story that was like oh, oh it looks interesting i mean <laughs> you have I, to check that one out yeah but, um, i'll have to check him out i mean i'm interested in the king uh black stuff and yeah it's me coming too, so well. yeah yeah it, it i uh i think it's gonna be good i uh it's just a lot of another other tie-ins though but i hope that these tie-ins will be good i know last absolute when absolute carnage came out um some of those tie-ins were eh, okay it was about 50 uh, 50 i'd say yeah. sometimes were good yeah. sometimes weren't which is typical of events so we'll see where that goes um yeah max like i said i'm excited to see finally this all play out the king of black uh, stuff so that should be pretty fun and interesting it's been um, a long time coming so hopefully it's got a fun conclusion yeah i was trying to see what else uh other comic stuff that was re- uh coming out though as uh well i can't remember that what the other big events that they were planning because you know marvel and dc are never in oh did you see um the uh dark knight stuff that Dar- tom mcfarland's coming out with for his action figures no i hadn't seen any uh yeah, he's, he's, got a, it though. he's got a few he's got the the batman with the uh, the guitar <laughs> the guitar axe or something like that yeah it's something like that um, he has the big giant uh, Mohawk, Amazonian, Wonder Woman, <laughs> um, a couple other characters as well. Uh, 
dark dark side but what is what is he though so he's like batman dark side or something uh, okay, right yeah. like dark yeah they got uh, a dark side right. batman yeah <laughs> once again dark metal is just batman everything batman this batman that batman 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it gets so old so fast, and they're not even really well written books in general. Uh, like, not bad, but just come on. All right, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, oh, uh, I wasn't expecting this, but yeah, we're gonna get a Clifford the Big Red Dog movie. That's coming out next year. Okay. Um, Gremlins three script has been completed, and they are not gonna be doing CGI. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yes, I. That's one of those one things I feel like just has to be kind of done practical. I mean, I some mean, CGI scenes is okay, you know. Yeah. Or even I, like when they do practical effects on top of CGI, that's fine too because it adds even more kind of. I feel like Star Wars shots. did it really well in The Mandalorian with that, where you keep to some old school, some new school, and then a mix mm -hmm. of the both. And yes. I think the Gremlins will benefit from that because I think if they went fully practical, it might be a bit rough, but. It's all about execution. So if they did a really good job, you know what I mean? People still do claymation and stopmation and get movies. So like it's all about just doing a really good job on whatever you're making. You know, the it's a little tougher with that, but it doesn't Yeah. It doesn't make it impossible. Uh and obviously um, some people really like the old school stuff too, so mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always yeah. Even when they did the Dark Crystal stuff, I was happy that they had Jim Henson do all the which I think he owns. Yeah, he, I believe anyways. he owns the rights to it, yeah. Um, let's see, Titans, uh, Starfire, they revealed her actual, That's... real, like, actual Starfire suit. Yeah. <laughs> and I how feel... long did it take? It's season three already. Yeah, it's, it's I feel like, seasons. I can't believe this is still even running. <laughs> Honestly. I, I thought that was, I thought it was over after the second, se or first season, actually. That's I didn't surprised. even know they had a second one. <laughs> I, I think I heard about the second season and kind of just brushed it off because I never really heard anything about it, good or bad, which is almost worse than hearing <laughs> bad things because at least if you're hearing bad things you're hearing about it right but um, i haven't heard good or bad from season two i've just kind of heard nothing and now season <laughs> three is coming out and i just wonder dc has to make money to keep making these shows and putting out new seasons right they can't just be pouring money in a hole for these so they've got to no. be making and money. then especially since at&t kind of acquired them I, they they really got to be I'll grabbing them really mm. tight and stern, like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> After so many people, they fire. Well, and I'm wondering, though, because that's real recent, so that might be a result of, well, but I think that's a result of AT&T, not of DC necessarily. I think that's mm -hmm. AT&T's mismanagement. But we'll never know. I mean, it's it's. we'll just have to see how DC, Warner Brothers, and AT&T handle their bullshit. Because yeah. they're always on it, man. They're always on some bull. And then uh, Animaniacs. So have you watched the uh, on Hulu? No, I haven't checked it out yet. I still gotta go look at it. Just check it out. I, it's it's pretty good. It, it feels still like the original, but then you know just modernized a little bit. Okay. Um, they and they play on that, you know, in the first episode. Um, so it, it's pretty good. I, I like the first one. Um, they kind of just talk about what's happened, and then there's a scene where. Well, we've been gone for 22 years, so what, what have we missed? Yeah, I figured and so, they'd do something uh, like that. Yeah, so they go ahead and start singing the song about all, all this shit. shit. And it's it's pretty cool. So you know it's, what it's it reminds writing, me of so is uh, Che and Silent Pop reboot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a whole riff um, on the fact that so, they're in And then parody. Deadpool 3 is moving forward. Oh, with, finally. As Disney's going to go with it. They're, and But they have new writers, though. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same writers that did 1 and 2. Well, we'll see um, how it goes. I don't know how I feel about that because, you know, one was really good. And th I think they right. did do, do uh, to a pretty – to extent, it was pretty good too as well. Yeah. I, I, and honestly, I couldn't even say honestly which one I like more. I think it's more about the progression of a character, and it's a little tough to do with Deadpool. Mm -hmm. So, like – Yeah, uh, it is. You know, he, he really doesn't have a rhyme or reason for what happens sometimes. So you can really Sometimes draw in the comics, he does have a little bit of a – growing arc but then it's it kind always... of then goes nowhere usually yeah, i mean most characters in comics never go anywhere that's the whole I'll point wipe my, i'll wipe my memories and just none of that happens yeah that was a funny one um i'm looking forward to seeing it but you know we'll never know until we see i haven't i don't know who the new writers are or what they've written yeah. before so i can't judge it i mean but I am glad that Disney is still going to do it. I mean, yeah. that's that shows shows us because a lot of people are, you know, mad that that's what was going to happen. But um, I mean, I feel like 
Disney knows there is a, a market for that, you know, because when when Deadpool one came out, wasn't it like I think the number one R rated film ever yeah. to make? Uh, yeah, gross the only thing money. that beat it was uh, Joker. Yeah, and so uh, you know, Disney's gonna not gonna be stupid, you know. They 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 see a, a big market for that, so I, I would just, yeah assume well, that they're gonna keep in, going for that in general excluding some of the tv properties disney does good at developing these characters for movies i mean uh, the least successful marvel movies are still on par with most other movies you mm. know and it's kind of sad to say it like that but like even the most unsuccessful marvel movies still make a good amount of money mm-hmm. um but we'll just have to see how they do on it i mean there's no way we're gonna know until it's released or we see trailers or get feedback from the crew and cast i don't it's yeah it's just up in the air yeah, and, and yeah, this may not even be something that yeah we might not see till twenty twenty two. Yeah, I'm sure it's nowhere near right now with all the COVID stuff. We're not going to see it for a while. But um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, Last of Us. Uh, finally, uh, it looks like HBO is uh, ordering a series for it, so they are going okay. forward with it. Well, they've been talking about it for uh, a while, so yeah. So uh, uh, we'll see how that goes. I li- I like the first game. You know, I heard. 50 50 with the second game so i don't know um but anyways i again i love the first game the story was good i thought so i think there's a good story to tell in the in the show as well if they just i guess focus on maybe just the first game um yeah i mean I depending think on how long they want to go with yeah. it i guess and who knows they <laughs> or might if they want to do their own thing i don't know who knows yeah. if they're going to do I something mean, totally it, different in just that those, realm it's totally it's really rough because if they do something totally different it's going to bomb period yeah I mean, people that, don't want just, that. No, they, they want the want, original they want characters. The, they want to see a, a live version of what they play. Now, they don't want it to be exactly the same, but if it's too different, they're not going to watch it. They no. just won't. Uh, and a lot of, you could draw similarities to any number of adaptions that have been that way. But, obviously, they can make changes. The Walking Dead is the perfect example of making small changes to a series that keep readers because it has the overall same tone i think the boys does the same thing in a very similar fashion where the changes can be small or big but in general the story is the same yes and i think some of the some of those writers know that know that as well and they're, they're good at doing that you know like yeah like saying hey we know that was good like that but let, let's let's just change it a little bit for, for the i show. feel like is it's it happened now of... for adaptions but, uh, uh, what was what another is... uh horror county uh as another one that i actually just enjoyed a lot too have you uh have you saw that show just yet oh you, you no. uh bro you gotta get hbo max you gotta watch <laughs> horror county is it good? Uh, i just yeah i liked it you know it was it you know at first i didn't but then i you know i kind of i kind of played into it more because i i thought about it more and i was like this is this is more of like a weird fiction kind of story and i and there's not a lot of weird fiction and then uh, what was also was just because it was you know african american people but then they also had jim crow evolved a lot with it too so it was you don't see a lot of like african american weird fictions uh shows ever. actually i don't think there ever <laughs> has ever been a weird fiction story on you know that and it was cool just to kind of like you know see how they played racism and se- segregation and everything into this weird fiction story and um cosmic kind of story as well and th- there's even an episode where like it gets it gets really like where she goes to like another world and she becomes different people and it, it, it's it gets really uh yeah it gets really cool it's really different uh, i almost said it to my mom too like it kind of reminds me of um at first it reminded me of uh the twilight zone because okay. each episode is kind of like something kind of weird that's <laughs> going on but um uh, yeah it, again i liked it it was very enjoyable um i i thought it was like again some cool history as well that played into it they did a lot of references for sure and the sets were amazing like i went and watched the behind the scenes stuff and it made me appreciate it even more because uh they really did their history they went ahead and looked at pictures of the 19th i think this is in like the 1950s or 60s can't remember but i think the early 1950s but um they literally got all the you know pictures and set scene by scene of what you know everything looked like on that street and so it really just brought it home and um it was really good i thought everything was good acting was good as well acting was really good actually <laughs> um so yeah it was, it was a really good show that and you know what else you should watch um was um the queen's gambit on netflix i think i've heard of that one 
It's um, about this little girl who's kind of like, I guess you could say a savant almost, uh, with chess though. Well, I guess it's more of like patterns, but it, but she kind of more goes into chess with it. Um, but anyway, she becomes an orphan. She ends up uh, finding a janitor who's playing chess by himself in the basement, and so she just kind of keeps watching him. But um, she she can't play because she don't want he doesn't want to play with her or anything. He's very taking it very serious, and so she just watches him, and. Um, she just by watching him just learns and uh she's like let me just play you now and so he she ends up he ends up playing her and she she's actually kind of good <laughs> and so she ends up getting even better and better and better out throughout the years but then also she has a problem with drinking and drugs as well because at a young age in the orphanage they were giving the children uh, horse tranquilizers um so she would she would take them a little bit too much and uh she, you know she developed a little bit of a addiction and so there's all that in, in it too as well. But it's a really good story. You should watch that too. It's it's just a one hitter uh quitter, so you don't have to expect another season or anything like that. It's a limited series. Okay. Uh so you could just watch the first I think it was maybe like nine episodes and that was about it. They're about forty five, you know, usually fifty minute long care. Uh, but yeah, that's another show I think I recommend uh, everyone kinda watch too. Um I think it just won a reward too or something like that, they were saying. Nice. Um, I can't remember, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, again, it was good. good. The acting was great. The sets were great. Um, all was pretty good. Film was just, yeah, it was filmed uh, very well as well. So um, anything else that you watched that you enjoyed so far that's been uh, out here I've in the last week? I've been doing Hellstrom. I did Blood of Zeus. Uh, oh, how was Hellstrom? Pretty good. Uh, there's ups and downs for it. Honestly, it, it, it has some mixed horror feels from a couple different genres, which is nice. I'd say my biggest criticism is it doesn't seem to follow the source material too closely, but I haven't necessarily gotten far enough in to prove that. So okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. there's, there's other things up and down. I think it's a pretty good series, probably on par with... Oh, shit. Let's see, what can I compare it with? Um, it's tough, because I want to compare it with the superhero series, but also with the horror series so it's tough to like make that comparison because mm, okay. they really don't have any of those uh i mean to a limited extent it reminds me a little bit sometimes of like bly manor and haunting on hill house and then it uh gives off some of the old school kind of demon possession movie stuff i guess or series stuff which is cool and then just playing into like the general little things you see for marvel collections and connections but uh those were pretty good uh what else was i watching i was watching a couple things i was checking out power of zeus was good i liked that show it was pretty good there was a couple of things that were up and down i felt a lot of it was sometimes a little predictable i just like the animation done on it because which is funny because i (laughs) it's very gruesome and um... and see i liked it because it was gruesome but not overly done yeah yeah like it wasn't like kill bill levels of blood spraying everywhere but you would still see gore and blood and yeah you know all this stuff it's funny though checked out Cost- what, castlevania stuff as well yeah i haven't seen the newest season but i checked out the other okay. ones i enjoyed yeah. it but it was short it was just really short most of the time okay okay yeah because like, i was i only like the i i watched the power of zeus stuff just because yeah those are the same uh same dudes that did that one the castlevania oh, okay. one which is so funny because the animation styles are like totally different <laughs> like entirely uh i mean they're interesting i like it because it honestly gives me the power uh, blood of zeus one gives me vibes from like avatar i think for more of the okay. animation styles because it kind of got like a hint of anime but it really does hit these flat color tones and then these soft painted backgrounds that you would see more in like american cartoons yeah yeah i think the guy who does those shows is African American too, but he has a love for Japanese uh, anime stuff too, and that's what he wanted to do. Was uh, was like, yeah, more of a Japanese kind of style or Western kind of Japanese style. Yeah, for his it's, take. it's definitely got an interesting take, and it's cool. It's got a, like an interesting depiction of the gods, their powers, their fighting, the pantheon, a different take on the uh, on the Greek mythology. Just, I mean, it's not that different, but it's a slight change in certain portions uh and it's interesting i'm trying to think of what other shows i was watching but it's just not springing into my head right now i think i've been going back through and watching some series to get ready for the next seasons that were coming out <laughs> um yeah i was trying to figure out too what i was watching here um like i said the Haros county which was really good i liked it 
Um, I don't know if they're going to go for a second season. It feels like they could end it there on that first one, but we'll see. They may go for a next one. Um, let's see what else here. No, there's a few other. Oh, um, Disney Plus came out with that holiday special for Lego. Um, I checked that out. <laughs> it was all right. But again, it was just for kids. So, oh, what I thought was funny is uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl are returning, and Robert Rodriguez yeah, he, is coming back to me do that. it. I think you showed that one last week. Right? Did we? Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, I thought it was very funny that Pedro uh, Pedro Pascal was going to be a thousand. Like, oh, look, it's the Mandalorian. He <laughs> wants you to recognize him, though. If, you know where I remember him from before all that was uh, another little show called uh, Snow, I think is what it was called. I can't remember what he used to do. And it was on uh, Century Fox. Oh, he was on, whatchamacallit, um, that stuff. Netflix show with uh, the cartels. It was uh, that famous one. Oh, what's his name? Pablo Escobar, is it him? Yeah, I think he was, uh, yeah, he was one of the gu- uh, his uh, gunmen on there. Oh, apparently he's in. Apparently he's Maxwell Lord too, in the new Wonder Woman. Narcos. There we go. He was in Narcos. That's what it's called. That's even funnier. He was in the original Wonder Woman, and he's going to be in the new Wonder Woman as a different character. <laughs> it's funny. Um, let's see what else here then. Um, oh, I know. Um, Soul. It's supposed to is also going to be streaming on Disney Plus starting December twenty fifth. Um, that was another movie that was supposed to be in theaters, I think, this year, but they oh, went ahead yeah, and yeah, they're going to stream one. it as well. But that uh, is not going to be paid for; it will be free. That's cool. <laughs> I I remember seeing the like little trailers and stuff going on for it, but it's been a while, so. Oh, I, and I Mortal Com- Mortal Kombat got uh, delayed. Oh well. I mean, we never even really got a, a date for it, so I'm surprised they even announced the delay. No, no, yeah, they just were, they were going to start, I think, filming because they had okay, all. Okay, so they're delaying they even do, the but, start. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Because I was going to say we had never even got like a release date or anything. Yeah, this they is just... the quote that comes from Todd uh, Todd Gardner. He said who stated that they won't have a release date for the movie until the years reopen. Same for trailer. Air, I guess. I mean, I don't blame them for stopping the production <laughs> because they're not going to be making money on them if they don't do something. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, the people want stuff. They want things. Oh, um, and then uh, Scream also wrapped up on filming. Um, so there's going to be a new Scream movie, which is supposed to come out January 2022, though. Is it going to be a reboot? or? No, it's a uh, it's continuation. Um, they even brought garbage. back one of the original <laughs> actors. Um, yeah, it's probably going to be awful then. Oh, God. The the movies had already gone down. I heard down 5 after. was actually good. Yeah, um, I wanted to see 5, but I didn't get to check it out. The problem is 1 and 2 are fine. 5 is Yeah, decent. 1 and 2 is good. And um, 3 and but yeah, 4 But yeah, 3 and bad. 4, yeah. I did, no, yeah that's the one favorites. with the news van and the fucking... You know the one I'm talking about. There was... Oh, and... The Tom and Jerry stuff. So, what did you think about that? That's interesting. That gonna do the fra- I, yeah. I knew they were gonna do it that way because there was no way they they could do that CGI. It just didn't. It, it didn't just feel good in weird. the Lion King, and I hope they learned yeah. their lesson there. So, it lo- I like that style of mixing animation live. I mean, ever since Pete's Dragon, that's been a popular kind of switch. So, mm-hmm. it's not. It's not something that's like going outside of the realm of possibilities or right or like pushing the limits it's just using a medium that people know and doing it with new characters which is fine um yeah and it'll be cool we'll i mean as long as the script is good i wonder what they're i mean i wonder what they're going to be doing for a movie but i did i wondered that when they did the animated movies for tom and jerry so did you watch their animated movie? Yeah, they, they actually, I just decent. watched it uh, yesterday with my son. I remember watching that movie when I was a kid. Yeah, they were pretty <laughs> decent. And once again, like I had asked that question, I was like, "Yeah, that's a fine movie." It's just one of those things where you always ask yourself, like, what these these weekly cartoons are going to do for their big mm-hmm. movie. And obviously, they did it fine in the last animated version, so I'm sure they can figure it out in this one. But a large part of things like that are the plot for the story. And so that's really where it starts off for those kinds of characters is you have to build the story and then build the comedy around the story. 
So hopefully right. they'll do a real good job at that and we'll get a, another classic Tom and Jerry movie. <laughs> you know? Well, um, yeah, other than that, I was just trying to see if there was anything else that uh that I had missed here, but I think we pretty much uh, I mean we've already covered everything from this week and a, a bunch of stuff from last week too. Yeah. Because we're really yeah, just covering uh, the Tom and Jerry one we covered last week. We covered the new uh like what was it? The uh you just mentioned it. It was I forgot, but we yeah we've already co- covered a couple points we covered last week, so unless we got something new, <laughs> that's funny. The Queen's Gambit has increased chest sales. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that, I guess that was what it was. Uh, Netflix said that they uh, beat a world record um, with it. I guess about almost sixty was it sixty eight million people had watched it within twenty eight days. I mean, uh, I no, 60, no 62 that. million households chose to watch Gambit, Queen's Gambit, in its first 28 days. So I guess that's a, a record for them. I've never had that many people wa- watch that that much of All one right. episode. I, so that's <laughs> what I was going to ask is like, what record is this? Is their record or world record? Yeah, that's, their, record? No, that's their record of like, how many people, you know, like, what, yeah. like, how many, I guess, yeah, just to nobody just to else. Them, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. Well, just because I wonder, because I'm always wondering if people are like, what's the best streaming thing? Usually the Super Bowl. Usually Dang, the Super Bowl has the Super highest Bowl. streams in the world. Not not anymore all the time, but it used to be that top one. So I was I always wonder when people say that it's like the best coffee in New York. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you really have the best coffee in New York? But no, that's cool. And I mean that's a good indication for them of how good a series is, how many people watch it. I mean Yeah, and the, people I will yeah, never exactly. understand how people don't get that in a subjective medium like art. TV music, the only objective measurement is how many people watch it and buy it. It's the only right. way to objectively measure it. You can't measure it based on preference or things because those things change with time and people. You know what I mean? Me and you like different styles of art. We can't just say this is the best art because I think yeah. it's the best art or because of this. The only way to really get down to it is how is do the majority of people like this style of art? <laughs> and that is the currently most popular style. But no, I, uh, I definitely get that. And it's it'll be interesting to see. I like that they did chess sale increases. That's funny. <laughs> um yeah, other than that, I uh, I'm just yeah, I was trying to look through my list here, but uh yeah, there's I think that was pretty much it, really all the big news here. Pretty good. I mean we covered a lot of stuff this week. Um, uh, and I, can't I know Christmas anything. Chronicles 2 came out on Netflix as well this weekend um, with Kurt Russell as <laughs> Santa Claus. That'll be funny. Oh, geez. There, there's, yeah, there's really just nothing else coming. <laughs> there's not as much stuff as we usually have where we have to pick out things and be like, yeah, this yeah. is all we got time for. Cyberpunk, just get ready for that. I think that yeah. comes out December, in like two weeks. Yeah, December 18th or something, I think, or 15th. I don't remember. I know that I got to go pre-order it because we're supposed to go do live run-throughs and guides and shit on it. But I, I just hope it's one of those games that were... It's not one of those ones where they... It's it's too it's too much, you know? It's like too much of an... Um, they... they they did more than they could, uh, than they you know could handle basically, because <laughs> sure. uh, there there has been games like that. I know Anthem was one of them. It was one of those ones where they had marketed it as it's going to be this really awesome open world game, almost like Destiny, yeah, all this blah blah that. blah. And then it was uh, another one. Of the, another <laughs> big example of that was uh, what was it again? It's that uh, space. No Man's Sky. Yeah, No Man's yeah, Sky. That was, was a big, big one. To be fair, they have re- eventually got to the place they promised to be. It yes, eventually yes. got to a good place where it was worth the money, uh, but it took a little bit. It took about a year at least after release for it to be a palatable game. And to be fair, I played it for like 30 hours in the old version. It was fine. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like it was a bad game. It just was not what you were promised. What they advertised. Yeah, exactly. Not being able to see and people. I, you should see it. There was a meme, but it was a meme on like all the things that have happened happened since Cyberpunk was scheduled to develop and release. And it's like two grand thought or two playstations two xboxes two, it was funny as hell 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's probably another big one. I mean, there's a little little game things here and there, but no big releases till next year besides Cyberpunk, as far as I know. No, 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 no. Um, nothing that I can think of and, right now. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm excited for. Is but just yeah, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk is going to be big. I mean, there's a ton of customization. There's a lot of cool options for streamers, especially because recently. I did hear they took away customization for cars, though. Which was what people were kind of like, ah, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get it though. I mean, they they need to get the shit out for once. So if they're gonna cut right. something, they, hopefully later. that's something that can be added right. on down and that's, the line. That's really what I'm hoping is that they don't stop just because it's released. Like they've made people wait so long, they need to put in more work on this after mm-hmm. it's done. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Obviously, I don't know shit. Um, I haven't said that. I think we're bridging on an hour and a half, so we're yeah. gonna wrap it up. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll be back hopefully next week. And hopefully there's more great stuff that we can talk about, at least more than this week. But we'll see. Um, All right. Sounds good. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And we hope to see you next time. Have a good one. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.